Select a typical rib and describe it. This is a typical rib of right side. This is the head of the rib and this is the neck and this is the tubercle. The head has two articular facets. The upper facet articulate with the lower demi facet of the body of the vertebral bow and the lower facet is large and it articulate with the upper demi facet of on the side of the body of numerically corresponding vertebra and this is the neck the constricted portion between the uh, tubercle and the head this is the tubercle it has two parts medial one is rounded and it is the articular facet it articulates in the transverse process of the numerically corresponding vertebra and this is the lateral facet is a uh, is called as non articular facet it is rough it articulates with articulates with the lateral costo transverse ligament lateral to the tubercle is the body of the rib the body of the rib is angled and this is the angle of the rib and it is where the shaft of the rib bends sharply forward and this is the shaft the shaft is thin and flattened and twisted along its long axis this is the anterior end it uh, insert with the corresponding costal cartilage the superior board of the rib is rounded and smooth the inferior border of the rib is sharp and thin it it has the costal groove and it accommodates the intercostal vessels and nerves what is the order of neurovascular bundle from above downwards intercostal vein intercostal artery intercostal nerve where do they inject intercostal nerve block near the lower board of the rib towards the subcostal groove it should be blocked before the lateral cutaneous branch of the nerve arises at the midline what are the layers that needle passes through skin superficial fascia serratus anterior muscle external intercostal muscle internal intercostal muscle tell me a situation where we perform intercostal nerve blocks to relieve the pain in rib fracture what if the needle point goes too deeply it may penetrate parietal pleura and may give rise to pneumothorax what is the treatment for tension pneumothorax needle thoracotomy what is the preferred site for a tube thoracotomy fourth or fifth intercostal space at the anterior axillary line what is the type of joint between costal cartilage and rib primary cartilaginous joint what is the weakest part of a typical rib angle of the rib what are the muscles in the intercostal spaces external intercostal internal intercostal and innermost intercostal muscles in addition sternocostalis and subcostal muscles lie deep to them and cross more than one intercostal space tell me about the drainage of intercostal veins anterior intercostal veins drain into internal thoracic or musculophrenic veins first posterior intercostal veins joins with corresponding brachiocephalic veins second and third posterior intercostal veins unite and drain into azygous vein in right side and drain into left brachiocephalic vein in left side other posterior intercostal veins of right side drain into azygous vein fourth to eighth posterior intercostal veins of left side 
drain into accessory hemicycle vein, 9th to 11th posterior intercostal veins of left side drain into hemicycle vein. How a zygous vein is formed? By the union of right ascending lumbar vein and right subcostal vein. How is it related to lung hilum? It arches forward to the right lung hilum. What is the importance of a zygous vein? Gastroesophageal collaterals drain into a zygous vein, forming portocystemic anastomosis. Also, azygous vein makes an alternative route to blood flow when there is an obstruction in superior vena cava. What is the clinical importance of that portocystemic anastomosis in portal hypertension? In portal hypertension, there is an increased blood pressure in the veins of portal system due to a blockage in the veins of the liver. It pushes blood into esophageal veins which have thin walls. Extra pressure causes them to expand and swell. If the pressure is too high, these varices break and bleed. It is an emergency because uncontrolled bleeding can lead to shock and death.